Alright, fuckers, episode 9 of the Hearts of Midlobian Football Manager 2018 career mode. And we've just received some big news for the chairman and budge. Ten Castle expansion has been completed. So the Hearts Board are pleased to announce that the planned expansion of Ten Castle has been completed. The expansion increases the stadium seating capacity by 2,529 seats, which is absolutely fantastic. And it takes the new um, total of... Um, to can accommodate to 20,009 spectators, which is great. So, you know, the more fans we get into tiny, the better. Uh, with potential, apparently the stadium has a potential to be expanded to 25,000. I mean, that perhaps is something that I would maybe like to do in the future. Who knows? But that's a long way away. What we're concentrating on now is actually picking up results, picking up wins, improving the team, and actually getting sold out 10 castles every single week and then we can try and you know in the future maybe try and worry about that but we've also got more uh, news here we've got the press conference coming up for the Partick Thistle game and you know what I'm going to let the assistant do that because I want to show you how we got on in the last game now since we left off we played Rangers and then we had a home game against Kilmarnock and we beat them 3-0 and it was a convincing win Steve Clark really is struggling at Kilmarnock, unlike real life where he's, in my opinion, he's been the manager of the year, he's been on fire in real life. Uh, in the game, in this game, he's really struggling. The goals came for Windass and uh, Kel Lafferty, who was re the returning Kel Lafferty, should I say, he got a brace. But he did pick up a slight injury though, which is kind of annoying. He's just back from injury, he picked up another one, but it shouldn't be anything major and he might even feature on this Partick Fizzle game today it just depends we also had Cassie Abui come back for the injury and he also picked up a slight injury as well so maybe that was my fault for rushing them back but like so at least we picked up three points there we have a massive game here against Partick Fizzle they are at home it's a Sunday game so we will find out what the other results in the league are before we play them which is always good so we'll be able to keep an eye on what Rangers do what Aberdeen do what the teams at the top are doing so we'll know exactly where we are come Sunday and what a win will do for us. Um, what else have we got though? Nowak injury blow for her, oh my god no. Scotland shows class to upstage Romania. Oh my god. Lafine's excited, oh my god let me see here. What's that injury like? What's the injury like? I want to see the injury, fuck me. Um, Let's go and see what the injury says. How long is this injury? Please don't be long. Five weeks. Are you shitting me, man? Five weeks? No, I've been actually one of our best players now. I wouldn't have thought he'd have been a big part of the team at the start of the season, but he has been up. He's been great. Like, uh, Celtic beat Ross County 3 0. Ross Scott Brown getting sent off in the 49th minute. And then Ross Draper getting sent off in the 65th minute. So. Shit must have went down there. And there you go, the results are in Aberdeen, Drew and Mullerwell at home. Dundee beat Kilmarnock again. Kilmarnock are fucking struggling. Hibernian got a much needed win. They picked up three points with a 3 2 home victory against St Johnson. And Rangers got a good win at home. They picked up a nice 3 0 victory over Hamilton. So big results there for Hibs and Rangers. And, uh, and, and ma another massive blow for Kilmarnock losing 3-0. They can see the league table then. So we now are fifth in the table. But we're going to this game against Pardick Thistle with the opportunity of knowing that if we win this game, we can go second in the league. So this is a massive game. I know it's still early on in the season, but I think just the confidence to actually see us in second, it would just be fantastic. If we lose it, we're going to be in fifth, which, you know, fifth it's not bad considering we had a poor start, but... I mean, we really do have an opportunity, I think, to do great things here. We've still got another six home games in a row. I think by the end of these six home games, we should be in second place and we should try and get a decent margin. We've got a great chance, I think. Let's just see if we can get it done. Uh, bookies have us 64 favourites. I would agree with that, even though Partick Thistle are above us in the league. We are at home and I think our form has been really good. Connor Salmon is ineligible since he's on loan from us. Interesting news, Aaron Hughes out with a broken ankle, unfortunately, and Nowak, like I say, won't be playing here. So can Ibui come in and take over from that position? We'll bring him in, and obviously Nowak is just not going to be featuring. Uh, who can feature then? What about Michael Smith? Is he, is he 
worthy of a place on the bench. We could. Um, where the fuck did the buoy go? Yeah, there's a buoy there, so we'll do that. We'll put a buoy in in the uh, defensive midfield position. Michael Smith can go as a. For some reason, it's not. Where the hell is it? Uh, no one there. Well, it's not going to be number two, right? So there you go, all these players again missing out. Um, anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, worthy way of getting a place on the bench. I'm going to go with the same team really, but just going to see if it can change anybody coming in. I don't think so. Kel Lafferty, advanced forward, target man, I think as support. Now I'm going to leave him as advanced forward because he's actually been doing well and I don't really want a result to target man football because I think we've been playing nice stuff at the moment. And I feel that if we change that, we might just, you know, um, result to long balls and shit like that. So there you go, I'm going to go with this. Connor Randall will be coming in for Jamie Brandon, who is slightly injured as well. And this, I think that's probably going to do it. We'll put who we we'll put on the bench. We'll put on Cochrane. I think can get a shot on the bench over Jamie Brandon, who's not fully fit. And there you go, guys. That is going to be the team then that gets stuck into this match: McLaughlin, Smith, Brown, Berra, Suter, Randall, Abui, Shuhum, Windass, Walker, Broadhead, and Big Kel Lafferty up front. Hartig Fizzle, going with a 4-5-1, I, I play this formation quite a lot in FIFA, pretty good in FIFA, hopefully not too good in this game, we've got Cerny, Keown, Define, Turnbull, Gaffarot, Barton, Osmond, Lawless, Ryan Edwards, Blair Spittle and Chris Doolin up front, so let's see how we get on, Chris Doolin loves a goal in Football Manager, he is like Cristiani Ronaldo, and uh, we'll see if he delivers that shit again today, Messi, Ronaldo, he's like fucking the two in one version of them, I am going to give the team talk, we're going to, we've been on a good run late, I want to be assertive, I want to make sure we get the win here, I expect nothing more than a win, keep this good run going, maybe that was the wrong thing to say, but I really do want a win here, um, cautious, there you go, let's get this done, come on lads, here we go, hearts kick it off with Kel Lafferty, Massive game at stake here for both teams. Just having an all look at the league table. Like a draw will keep Patrick Fissle in second. But a win would be even better for them, right? What is happening? It's lawless to Osman. Osman plays up Chris Doolin. It's through to Ryan Edwards. That's not good defending, surely not. It's a good save though for McLaughlin. Partick Fissel looked like they were going to go 1-0 in front there in just under 4 minutes, but McLaughlin making a good save, denying the goal. Ryan Edwards with the corner, whipped in, and it's cleared away. This time Stephen Lawless picks it up, charges in, crosses it, and Randall again. I thought I took Randall out. No, I didn't. That was um, Jamie Brandon, wasn't it? Yeah, Connor Randall's actually playing, so he is. And uh, Partick Fissel seemed to have the better of this opening, but we're still in the tie, 0-0, so we didn't concede... That's all that matters, really. But Nathan Broadhead does appear to be lacking a bit of fitness. He's 83% already, and the match has just started. That's not good. Wind has to Walker. Walker plays it to Shum. Walker enjoying this cam roll. It's Broadhead. Can he get a cross into the box? It's yes, crossed in. Defeen clears it. Only as far as Jamie Walker, who shoots! And it is a goal! Certainly there in the party Fissel. I don't know what quite I don't know what happened, man. It looked like a shot that you'd expect him to save. It wasn't right in the corner. But I'm not going to complain if Cerny doesn't want to save it. If he wants to give us the goal, we'll take it with open hands. And that puts us 1-0 in front. Delighted with that. Come on, guys. Let's keep this performance going. We're currently now sitting second in the league table. As you can see, man, this is fucking great. Considering we had a poor start to the season, man, this is absolutely fantastic. Let's just keep this up and hopefully we can get the win here. Ball played up to Chris Doolin, he brings it down, he hods it up, he finds Blair Bit of Spittle, man, is completely just, oh my, the ping pong at the moment, can he keep up with his action, right, Adam Barton, back out to Spittle, Barton, oh no, he's played through Chris Doolin, is it Chris Doolin or is it Cristiano fucking Doolin, well not with a shot like that, it's not, almost hitting the corner flag, Jamie Walker with the free kick. It's back to Jamie Walker. He's got another opportunity. A second bite at the cherry. Crossed in. Cleared away. Shum. Can Shum do? Shum. To Broadhead. Broadhead. 
He's brought, he's going to all the way back into his own half. What the hell is he playing at? Shum, Walker, Breadhead, Shum, crosses it in, back post, Walker with the head on, it's a save from Cerny. 18 minutes in so far, and a lot of action, man. We've had good chances at either end, we took ours though, and that puts us 1 0 in front. Possession wise, it's been pretty equal, I believe. Yeah, we've had 56% just edging it there, but I mean, still both teams are alive and kicking in this game. Twenty-four minutes gone now. What have we got? It's Shum. And McLaughlin's got an easy pick up there. Did not have to worry about that one at all. Big punt up towards Shum. It's headed down. Suter wins it. Bit to Broadhead. Broadhead loses it though. Keon loses it back when. Both teams struggling to keep possession here. Lafferty to Shum. Big game for both of these teams. Perhaps nerves are showing. Chris Doolin finds Ryan Edwards. And Ryan Edwards hits it straight at McLaughlin. Good save from the keeper, but Ryan Edwards should have buried that man. He hit it straight at him, and that is poor. That's very poor. Eight minutes to go before half time. Cerny, big punt up, suit up, controls it. And it finds its way back to Cerny. And uh, this is very. I don't know if this is supposed to be a highlight, but not. Oh shit! Ryan Edwards is through! And he's missed again! Are you shitting me? I, mean, I don't know how many chances Partick Fist will want, but. They're squandering so many here, that's twice they should, that's three times actually where they've had like one-on-ones and they've, they've uh, missed them all, like I mean, that, he didn't even get that one on target, that was really bad, corner coming in now, it's Berra heads it down to Shum, and Shum doesn't miss, get the assist from Berra, Shum with the goal, 2-0, just on the brink of half time, and that really is a game changer, I mean it was all bloody uh, Partick Thistle there in the last few minutes, they were creating chances, Created a one-on-one -on -one chance, didn't take it, and then all of a sudden we take it. And that could just break the spirit of Partick Thistle as we take a two-goal lead going into half-time. And surely this is our game to lose now. Half-time, just need to stick at it, man. Just tell the boys more of the same. Um, going to be assertive, though. I'm um, yeah, that could you're winning, but don't let perform, don't let spit levels drop. Hopefully, I want to try and give the lads encouragement, but also don't be too harsh on them. But I mean, I want to give them encouragement to keep the levels up, but also praise them at the same time. And they're bringing on Nails Story, Mc, Mc, uh, Keon coming off, so Party Fist are not wasting any time. They're going for it. They know that they need to get back in this. Doolin, it's crossed it back post, it's Lawless, it's a goal, Doolin with the assist, Lawless with the header, and that is getting, that's them back in it now, 2-1, didn't take them long to get back in the game.
69 minutes gone now. Laffy, nice lofted ball over to Windass who runs onto it. It's been brought down. And Windass doesn't get this penalty. Apparently he won the ball. Looked a bit controversial. Windass was down for a while. Looked like he was injured. He'd assume there was contact. Smith Brown, Walker. And that's just wide. But Walker, what a goal that would have been on the folly to bury it and to secure all three points. But not quite on this occasion. 19 minutes now to go. Walker, he's been dispossessed. Ericsson plays it straight to Broadhead. Partick Thistle now getting sloppy here. As and they've still got a lot of time. It's 18 minutes. They don't need to do anything uh, drastic just yet. It's Lawless though. Oh, that's another good save by McLaughlin. Surely though, Lawless should have did better there. Can't help feel that but they should be scoring these goals. I'm not going to complain because it's keeping us in the lead here, but I mean, I just feel like they should be scoring these goals, man. Right, going to make a substitution there now. We've got Jamie Walker, who is injured. He will be coming off. We'll bring on Harry, Harry Cochran. Why not? Who else can we bring on? Bring on Maitland Niles, I think, for... Connor Randall has not had the greatest game. And then one more sub. Who should we bring on? Maybe Kel Lafferty. Don Kirby, do we bring Don Kirby on? He's only about wanting game time. Um, we'll bring Don Kirby on for a buoy. There you go. Try and keep Don Kirby happy because he was he was complaining about lack of game time, lack of minutes. Hopefully, how we sub. Oh fuck me, no! I need to go tactics. Please don't concede here. I'm trying to get into the tactics. I'm trying to good save for McLaughlin. I'm trying to fucking go on to defend here, defensive. Uh, there you go, making the changes now. It's Windass, big launch up forward to Harry Cochrane. What can the substitute do? He's offside. So he can't do much, can he? <laughs> Still 2-1 with 10 minutes to go. Like I said, this win would put us top, well, not top second, but second feels like top, let's be honest. We'd be six points behind Celtic, although Celtic would have a game in hand, but I mean, we're not competing against Celtic. We know they're going to win the league by a big fucking margin. We're just trying our best here to try and perhaps get European football for next season, a top three finish, and this win would put us in the right direction. But there's still 10 minutes to go, 10, I fucking better not be 10 minutes to go, 10 seconds to go, McLaughlin, big punt up. He finds Shum, who finds Broadhead, Broadhead now just go down the corner, and that's it, it's over. With one, were we the better team here? Probably not, I mean, I think we were lucky. Partick Thistle did waste quite a lot of opportunities, but at the end of the day, we took ours. They didn't take theirs, and we've got a 2-1 win, and I am more than happy with that performance and that result. So, uh, you go, John McLaughlin made seven saves. Probably the man of the match. Did he get man of the match? He got 6.7 rating. He only conceded one goal. I don't know. I don't quite know what you need to do, actually, to get... Like, if you're a goalkeeper, to get a good rating, because I think that's... Uh, should we say that? That was a real Jekyll and Hyde performance from you. Um, I think we will say that. No, I think we'll, we'll be we'll get be passionate, man. Have a um, well done, lads. That was a good win for us, and most of them have reacted positively. And that's what it's all about, guys. Team spirit, team community, team cohesion. We're, we're going in the right place, man. We're going in the right direction. I think we can do really well this season, man. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm delighted with how things are going here. So we've got Hearts enter the Euro Cup race. You're damn right we're in this Euro Cup race, and I think we've got a good chance of getting it. Really hope so. Anyway, Jamie Walker's going to be out for one to three days. He might miss the next match against Ross County. Hopefully he won't, but uh, I think there's a possibility that he will. Hibernian have been the surprise story of the Ladbrook Premiership season so far, uh, season for all those wrong reasons. As their previously lofty ambitions have given way to considerable turmoil, what have you made of them? I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be cautious. I'm going to, um, I'm going to say that, yeah, they're too good to struggle. I do actually believe that. I don't, I don't know why Hibs are doing so bad. They're doing bad in FIFA as well. It just, must just be, I don't know, the makers of these games must be, mustn't be Hibs fans. They must hate them or something. Um... Uh, calm, I am pleased, it's nice, it's up to them to keep going now. You've enjoyed a brilliant season so far, defying expectations at every turn have become a most compelling story. How far can your team go? Cautious. 
Um, you can only take things one step at a time. Chris Doolan was brilliant today, Karen. He's a very good player. I'm sure his manager will be pleased with that performance. Gibson raises broadhead fitness concerns. Yeah, I did know that. I mean, I think we will... Uh, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not going to tell Broadhead I'm resting him, but I think I will just go ahead and rest him next time out against Ross County. Because I did notice that his uh, fitness was struggling in that match, so we need to take care of him. And there you can see now in the league table, that puts us into second. And although we have played a game more than Mullerwell, so Mullerwell have got an opportunity to go back in front of us. But if you look at the form of the top three teams, look at that, Celtic Hearts and Mullerwell, we've all won four and drew one of our last five. So we're the top three teams are definitely the top three teams on form, no doubt about it. And then you've got Kilmarnock, they've lost, they lost the last five in a row. It's not looking good for them, is it? I mean, look at those, look at those results. I mean, they're... They're fucking awful, aren't they? Um, so surely it's only a matter of time before Steve uh, Clark gets the sack, and I think that's sad, but that's just the way it's going to bloody go, isn't it? Um, have a look at the job centre, and we'll... If I can remember how you get to the job centre. Job, job security, that's what I'm going to look at, because I'm pretty sure Steve Clark, his job is ins very insecure. I'm not surprised about that. You I mean, he's having a really bad season. You've got... Derek McKins, his job site is insecure now. I think that's hard considering all the good things he's done at Aberdeen. Just to, you know, all of a sudden his job be insecure because they're 7th. Now I know they're having a bad season but I think he'll turn it around. I hope that he doesn't get sacked. And then you've got Neil Lennon whose job is stable and, and he's having a lot worse season than, uh, than Derek McKins. So that's, that's weird but... Looks like Steve Clark really does need to change something. He needs to start getting wins or he could be out of a job. But anyway, enough about Steve Clark. Let's talk about Son of Scotland 90 and doing great. Let's look at the next few games and see where we think we'll pick up points. So, like I said, we've still got that run of home games to go. Another five home games in a row ending with a home tie against Celtic, which will be televised. That's probably the next game I'll come back for. So I think I'll play these four games offline. Ross County, Hamilton, Mullerwell and Celtic. And then we will be back for this game against Celtic at home. And then we'll probably play St. Johnson offline. And then we will be back for this away uh, home tie against Hibernian. And maybe, who knows... Maybe I'll do a double header, Hibernian and Aberdeen. It'll be interesting to see if Neil Lennon and Derek McKins are still there. Will both of them still be there? Will one of them still be there? Or will both of them be gone? There's only one way to find out, guys. That's to like and subscribe, comment down below. And uh, we'll be back next time with a huge match against Celtic. We've already beaten them once this season. Why can't we do it again? Or oh, we haven't beaten them once. We, we got beat by them. Fuck me. I thought we beat Celtic. That's in FIFA. I'm getting confused. Fuck. 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 Right, so well, a 1-0 defeat against Celtic at, at Parkhead is not a bad result anyway, so hopefully we can go one better at home and get the win. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, peace.